Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to do some more color blocking. I did this in a recent uh, video, um, maybe about a month ago, and uh, decided I needed to revisit it. I enjoyed it. And, um, so we're going to do some foiling, some color blocking, and some embossing today. So I have my glimmer system from Spellbinders warming up. Um, while that is warming up, we're going to go ahead and kind of go over the rest of the supplies that we'll be using today. So I've got some Spellbinders gold foil. This is kind of like a satin matte foil. It's kind of one of my favorites. Uh, it's just really, really pretty and soft. Um, this is the Pink Fresh Studio Ina's Alpha. This is a stamp, die, foil, and coordinating stencil bundle. And I have all of the components just because I like the versatility and options that gives me. Uh, today we're just going to be using the die and the foil plates. Uh, I also have Pink Fresh Studios, I believe this is the Dahlia Bunch. And I'm going to use the stamp and the die for that today. This is some scrap, uh, just copy paper um, that I'm going to use. There's some hammer mill cardstock, and then there is some vellum. This vellum is from Amazon. I can't tell you what brand or anything about it. I just know I got it off of Amazon. This is some silver pearl embossing powder from Ranger. Uh, then I have my Versamark ink and all of my other tools for uh, embossing. <clears throat> Here is just some colors of Paper Studio cardstock that we'll be using today to do the color blocking portion. So first things first, I'm going to take, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I'm going to take just one of these little pieces of scrap copy paper that I've trimmed down to four by five and a quarter, and I'm going to put some tape runner on this, uh, just scrap piece of paper. Um, then I will end up kind of setting that cardstock, uh, into that tape runner. This is going to give me the chance to kind of get all three colors, give me an idea on how they're going to lay and what they'll look like when they are trimmed down. So I just used some tape runner. This is purchased off of Amazon. It's called AdTech. Um, it's a really strong tape runner um, and really economically priced. Um, I really enjoy it. I was purchasing this on from Hobby Lobby, uh, but they kind of upped their prices and they weren't doing like a coupon code anymore. So I purchased it off of Amazon now and it is um, actually cheaper. So all I did was kind of butt those up against each other to make sure there was no gaps. And then I'm going to just take some scissors and roughly cut, <clears throat> excuse me, roughly cut the rest of the excess of this cardstock off and I will go back with um, some straight edge scissors these kind of have a serrated edge to them these Tim Holtz shears right here uh, I'll go back with a pair of scissors that has a straight edge and uh, snip the rest of that off um, we're going to repeat that for the other one and then we will be able to move on so that is what they both look like when they are roughly done so we're going to move on to the foiling. So my glimmer system has heated up. It says the platform is ready. That green light is steady and on. So that means we are ready to actually begin to foil. So I'm going to take this Spellbinders foil and this uh, foil plate from Pink Fresh Studio, the Ina's Alpha. I'm going to make the pretty side of the foil touch the pretty side of the plate. And I'm going to tape all of that in place. I'm going to set this with the foil touching that silver section of the glimmer system. And this is the hammer mill cardstock that I cut down to a more manageable size. Um, I'm going to make the pretty side of the, or I'm, excuse me, I'm going to make the foil plate touch the gray part. I'm going to start the timer. Once that button quits flashing, it's ready to run through your die cut machine. Um, I, because this is a larger plate, I kind of let it sit on there for a few seconds more, maybe 15, 30 seconds longer, uh, just because I feel like I get better results that way but you may discover that you don't have to do that with yours. So here I have flipped over that scrap piece of cardstock that had my color blocks on there, and I am just cutting it off, cutting off the excess from behind. Um, that, what you're seeing there is me experimenting with something that we will show in a future video, I hope. So I just snipped off all of that excess, threw that away, and I 
that uh, timer button has stopped flashing. It is a solid green now, and I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. I go forward and backward really, really slow, and I hold the plates in place um, so that they don't like skip or jump um, and get me like a random double foiled image. And it foiled beautifully. Um, you can keep this excess foil here, and if you have a solid foil plate, you can um, foil it that way. I don't want to do that today, but that is definitely an option. I'm going to repeat that for the second piece of cardstock so that we have two sets of letters. We're going to spell the word high on this die cut, or excuse me, on these cards today. Um, and I just ran that through with the coordinating one piece die. Uh, when you do that, it cuts out all of the letters at once, which is really, really handy, saves a lot of time. Um, I really appreciate companies that are doing this now. And I appreciate companies that have their dies already separated, and I don't have to separate them out. That's very nice. And I appreciate those little steps. So I ran um, both of those letters through my die cut machine, and I set those off to the side. Now we're going to do some for, uh, embossing. And I am embossing on that vellum. And I'm using that Dahlia Bunch from Pink Fresh Studio. And I have treated my vellum with some anti-static powder and spread that around with a dry brush. And then I'm going to use my Versamark ink and ink up this image. I recently re-inked this Versamark pad, so I was prepared to stamp it twice, but didn't have to. It stamped pretty well the first time. I'm going to sprinkle on that silver pearl embossing powder from Ranger tap off the excess, and then I'm going to repeat this for the second piece of vellum so we can have it for our second card. While I was doing that, I was making sure my gun, my heat gun, was getting nice and hot off to the side, and then I'm going to heat set this on both pieces of vellum. Uh, you know that your embossing powder is done when it is smooth and shiny, uh, no longer grainy and dull, um, and just to forewarn, vellum heats up very, very quickly. So you don't run the risk of um, overheating and kind of warping and bubbling your vellum. The second you see it turn, move on. If you linger in the same area, you're more than likely going to warp and bubble your vellum, uh, which isn't the end of the world. It's just a piece of vellum. You just get another one, but uh, just so you can save yourself some time and heartache, the second you see it turn shiny and no longer grainy, move on. I'm going to take the coordinating die, tape it in place, and run that through my die cut machine as well. And I'm going to set those off to the side. We're going to move on to the coloring. This does have a coordinating uh, stencil set that will color in these letters, but I decided I wanted to use markers. So if you want to take a screenshot, these are the artist markers from Altenew that I'll be using today. Um, I don't use all of them, I don't think. I don't think I use that darkest blue, and I don't think I use the darkest purple. So I don't use the dark night, and I don't use the hydrangea. Um, but I do use emerald, ultraviolet, ocean waves, coral berry, which I don't show you right now, but I do bring in later, and mango smoothie, grass field. I do use all three of those, and all I'm going to do is just take these artist markers. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not doing any shading. I am just going to color in these um, letters using these markers. Now you can um, color over the foiling with these artist markers and it doesn't affect the foiling. Um, I know that with like embossing there's I've been told, I've never had this issue, but I've been told that you can ruin the nibs of your artist markers if you go over embossing powder with them. Um, I have never had that problem, but I also don't sit there and scrub over it to make it a problem. Um, but this foiling, there's no issues. You're not going to ruin the nibs if you go over it. You're not going to mar the foiling if you go over it with these markers. Um, if you think that, you know, your foiling is sticking on there and it's not coming off, um, and it's kind of dulled it or, or discolored it, uh, you can take like a dry cloth and go over it. Um, or you can even take like your fingertip and like the oils from your fingers and uh, just the texture of your fingers will, will usually get it off. So I'm going to finish coloring these in for both of these uh, sets of letters, and then we can move on to the next step, which is going to be starting to put things together. 
Now I'm not a very good color and I got out of the lines. So the sections that I got out of the lines with my marker got a little carried away with. I'm just going to use a Sakura Jelly Roll pen in the 8 and uh, just gently roll over that and color over it with that marker, or excuse me, with that pen. And that will kind of hide any boo-boos that you may have as far as uh, coloring outside of the lines. A jelly roll pen and an adhesive eraser and a uh, sand eraser are probably some of my most used tools in my craft room because I am a very fast and klutzy <laughs> And not a very careful crafter and so those are tools that I use often in my craft room so that just kind of hides any boo-boos that you may have so now we're going to start putting things together I am going to go ahead and here are these color block sections flat to my card base these are an a2 size card base so when folded they are four and a quarter by five and a half and these color block sections are four by five and a quarter so that gives you just a small little border all the way around and I am going to adhere those flat on both cards. I'm going to set my little Misty on there to uh, kind of provide some weight so they can dry flat. And then we can start adhering these letters to the vellum. Now vellum is tricky to adhere because, every, because the paper is so thin, the vellum is so thin, you can usually see any kind of adhesive you put on it. Um, and if you do a wet adhesive because it's so thin, it can usually warp. So I have just accepted the fact that this vellum floral arrangement, this Dahlia Bunch, is going to be held down uh, just underneath these letters, which means the rest of it is going to have some lift, it's going to have some air, it's going to have some dimension off of this uh, colored block card um, base, which I'm okay with. Now, if you don't want that, if you want it to be adhered down more securely than just at, underneath these letters high, if you have a sticker maker, you can run it through that. If you have some spray adhesive, you can use that. Um, I've seen Christina Werner apply a very, very, very thin layer of wet glue all over the back. I have tried that and I'm, I think my vellum is much thinner than what she was using. And so my vellum just warped really bad. Uh, I still went with it. It didn't it wasn't too bad. It was just on a little sentiment strip and I was able to kind of salvage it. But um, that's something that she did successfully. I have not had any, had any success doing that. Uh, and again, it may just be the quality of vellum. Hers may be of a higher quality than mine. Um, so I'm just going to apply adhesive underneath these letters and then apply adhesive on the vellum underneath these letters so you don't see it. Um, I chose not to put any gems or pearls or anything like that on here, but you absolutely could. And those would be another point where you could apply adhesive and kind of keep this, um, apply more points of adhesion, uh, and stick to these, to these cards. But that is it. So these are the cards complete. Uh, I did pair them with some Paper Studio envelopes. Uh, and coordinating colors, but these are the cards complete. Um, I hope you feel inspired and I hope you enjoyed and I appreciate you spending time with me today and until then we will see you next time. Bye!